the sky. Okay. Psalm. Mm -hmm. I'll get uh, all the. It's it's in. What do you want? Yeah, you got it. Just one, two. Oh, no. one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, he made oh, it. One, two. This channel is bad. Yeah, that's what it is. At least okay. we know. <laughs> psalm five. Out the this is a song to the chief musician upon Nehiloth, a psalm of David. Give ears to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee I will, will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell in thee. In these days we say, Lord, thank you for yes. that. Yes. Your goodness. Amen. The foolish shall, shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hates all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy them wait that speak. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not the passion. No, it's not the passion. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. oh here we go. Pure and shining one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> for for who, who, who receives the inheritance by King David, listen, Yahweh, to my passionate prayer. Can't you hear my groaning? Don't you hear how I'm crying out to you? My King and my God, consider my every word, for I am calling out to you. At each and every sunrise you will hear my voice as I prepare my sacrifice of prayer to you. Every morning I lay out the pieces of my life on the altar and wait for your fire to fall oh, that's upon my heart. So good. I know going. that you, God, are never pleased with lawlessness or yeah. evil ones. And those evil ones will never be invited as guests into your house. Right. Boasters collapse, unable to survive your scrutiny. For your hatred of evildoers is clear. You will make an end to all those who lie. Oh, Lord, please, Amen. we're praying for this. Amen. How you hate their hypocrisy and despise all who love violence. But I know that you will welcome me into your house, for I am covered by your covenant of mercy and love. Thank you, Yeshua. Yes, amen. So I come to your sanctuary with deepest awe to bow and worship and adore you. Yahweh, lead me in the pathways of your pleasure, yes. just like you promised me you would, or else my enemies will conquer me. Smooth out your road in front of me, straight and level, so that I will know where to walk. Their words are unreliable. Destruction yeah. is in their hearts, yeah. drawing people into their dark darkness with, with their, their speeches. speeches. Oh. Yeah. They are oh smooth-tongued deceivers, yeah, silver-tongued devils, yeah. flattering yeah. with right. their words. Declare <laughs> them guilty, O God. Let their own schemes be their downfall. Yes. Let the guilt of their sins collapse on top of them, for yes. they rebel against you. Yes, Lord. Yeah. But let them all be glad, those who turn aside to hide themselves in you. May they keep shouting for joy forever. Overshadow them in your presence as they sing and rejoice. Then every lover of your name will burst forth with endless joy. Lord, how wonderfully you bless the righteous. Your favor wraps around each one and covers them under your canopy of kindness and joy. Let's say it together. Lord, Lord how, how wonderfully you bless the righteous. Your favor wraps around each one and covers them under your canopy of kindness and joy. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise so good. Glory to God. Boy, there's so much in that that's so good. And Praise. timely. The, the timely. Exactly. It's exactly the time for, yeah. and this is so important that we be praying every minute we can, every time we yes. think of it between now and the end of Tuesday, yeah. mm. but not even to stop then, but right yeah. now we are in an emergent time. It's yes. important to pray yes. for your 
goodness and glory to overshadow yes. everything. And no matter what the outcome is, Lord. Go ahead and pray. Yes. Wh whatever the outcome, we Lord, trust we'll you. We, we follow you. you. We have we'll faith in you. And the title deed that you've yes, given us Lord. is faith that we yes. believe. Right. So we yes. trust that title deed that Amen. when we have faith yes. and when we believe, Amen. you will deliver what you have promised. We you, and we stand with that. <laughs> we are you, not Father. afraid. Even though things look dark, mm -hmm. you operate That's in right. everything. That's Light, right. dark, anything. Yeah, yeah. There is nothing That's that right. has got you frightened, That's nothing that has right. you upset or worried. Right. You have it. You know it. You have a plan. So all. we commend ourselves to you yes. and trust we you. Trust you have Lord. faith in you. Believe your promises. Praise your name. So we do not have worry, but no. we join in prayer asking for mercy for ourselves but also for those whose eyes are blinded yes. they're the ones that need your mercy the most yes. please the most. help them the help, them. Yes. help them help them their eyes to be open yes. that they see the evil that they're doing and they turn to you yes lord in jesus name in jesus name can i tell you yes 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 here well here. Too, what i was reading i was reading in amos uh -huh. It so reminded me of America oh, <laughs> at this yeah. time. Yeah. You know it's, true. it's true. But you know, you know, we've been praying for like people to come. The other day, I was at Walmart, and this lady bought a Bible. Yeah, she was awesome. buying a Bible, and I was like, I just thought, Wow, God! Because yeah. you know, I keep playing. You know, bless them with the love of the truth, the ability. Yes. Because you know, it says even in Psalm 19, the law is worth. Yes. Wow, the Lord is perfect. It's perfect converting converting the soul. The soul. Yeah. Amen. Coming, so, coming. Amos, where were you in Amos? 3-9. <laughs> well, just, I was reading it, and I was like, when he's talking about, like, well, first Israel, what they were doing in the nations around mm -hmm. Right. And then it was like, whoa, that's so America. Mm -hmm. But, like, 1, 2, and 3, and then 3 through 6, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. Amen. And it was like, oh, God, have mercy. Wake yeah. America up. We can read the whole thing if you want. Are we yeah, at I will. Israel's good. Yeah, let's do. Is Here. that just Coming. King James? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah just King James. Is that Amos right? 3. Okay. Yeah. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? <coughs> will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Well, mostly you know what I was reading to was about the judgments of all the nations around. Right. Yes. And then what was going on in Israel, but he... They would say that to everybody. That's oh. really good. <laughs> <laughs> you are good. I'll just keep reading. <laughs> and I just thought that was that's what struck me. Amen. Because Amen. you know why I thought that was because we were founded on godly principles. Amen. And I recently heard about George Washington and some of the prayers and he was praying was the same thing like what Moses said to the Israelites mm -hmm. when they came mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and I didn't know that but right. he said kind of like right. you know if you like that whole Deuteronomy yeah. thing mm -hmm. to have choose life or choose death in, right. that it'll right. happen and where we are today it's but in yeah. Amos it was like he talked to all the nations around yeah. but then like he looked right at Israel and all the things God had delivered them from, they Praise were doing. God. Yeah, yeah. And that's it right. was like, whoa. Yeah. And I just yeah. had this flash of like, this is America. We're yeah. in here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Will a rock? Oh, okay. Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a lung, young lion cry out of his den if he had taken nothing? Can a bur bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? 
Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants and the prophets. Amen. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken, but who can but prophesy? Publish in the palaces at Ashad and in the palaces of the land of Egypt and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria and behold the great tumults in the midst thereof and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in the palaces. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs, or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria, in the corner of a bed, and in Damascus, in a couch. Wow. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, in that day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him. I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. Wow. I don't think I have read this one. I yeah, think that's I good. read four through six. That's okay. It's good. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish. And the two great houses shall have an end, save wow. the Lord. That's amazing. And remember, we are like Israel. Yes. We are not a replacement right. for Israel, yep. but we are like That's Israel. Right. And God That's said right. to Israel, That's you guys right. are doing it wrong, right. and I'm going to take care of this. Right. That's right. That's what he's yeah. doing here, too. That's so good. That's right. Oh, thank you, dear. I wanted to read Psalm 119. One, Psalm 19. 19. You would like to read Psalm 19. Okay. That's the one I hey. bless you. Would you like to read Bernadine? That's my favorite. You've got a ton of favorites. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul of the testimony. Psalm 19. For the pure and shining one, a poem of praise by King David, his loving servant. God's splendor is a tale that is told. His testament is written in the stars. Space itself speaks. His story every day through the marvels of the heavens. His truth is on tour in the starry vault of the sky, showing his skill in creation's craftsmanship. Each day gushes out its message to the night, to the next night, with night whispering its knowledge to all. Without a sound, without a word, without a voice being heard. Yet all the all world, the world, all yes. the world can, see. can see its Boy. story. Praise the Lord. Everywhere Praise its Lord. gospel is clearly read so all may know. Yes. What a heavenly home God has set for the sun, shining in the super dome Amen. of the sky. <laughs> see how he leaves his celestial chamber each morning, radiant as a bridegroom ready for his wedding. Like a day-breaking champion, eager to run his course. Praise. So on on Thursday morning we read this, and it's true. It's like, you know, they we belittle the earth and the creation. You know, they say. Use your mic. The earth mic, is mic, mic. the earth is the third rock from the sun. Yes. Well. No. It's more than that. Way more. Way, <laughs> more. Way, way more. Way more. It's a lie. It's cries out it has a job i mean this number five just gives me the picture of the sun coming up on our land in the morning yes. and and saying i have a purpose for today you know it's like everything has a purpose what a yes. what a heavenly home god has set for the sun shining in the super super dome of the sun that's the real show Every day. Amen. That's the real story. Amen. Every day. That's the real Super Bowl <laughs> of the earth. Because and this happens every single day. And you know, we get we get all oh, the sun come up, you know, whatever. But it's a huge mass, the sunning that's shining in the superdome of the sky. See how he leaves the sun. 
See how he leaves his celestial chamber yes. each morning, radiant as a bridegroom, ready for his wedding, like the day breaking champion, eager to run his course. This is the sun. Yeah. Yes. It's so cool. So um, I just, when I was thinking about this on Thursday, I, uh, I remember Wileen, my friend in Singapore, she would say, you know, we are the land of the rising sun. Yes. And they cry out from the house of prayer in Singapore. They cry out for the day for the whole world. And they pray for the world. Amen. Because the day, the sun rises in their, starts in their place, right? And Amen. they consider that their job, to welcome the world into the presence of God. Yes. And the sun does the same. Yes. yes. <laughs> Is that so incredible that the sun rises on the horizon and completes his circuit on the other, mm -hmm. warming lives and lands with his heat? Go ahead, read, read Bernadine. Number seven. seven. God's word is perfect in every way. How it revives our souls. His laws lead us to truth and his ways change the simple into wise. Let's say that together because it's so powerful. So it's 197. God's word is perfect in every way. How it revives our soul and his laws lead us to truth and his ways change the simple into wise. And in the uh, King James, it says it converts the soul. And so we need God's word to convert our soul every yes, day yes. because it's perfect in every way. And it revives us. It's so, that's so powerful. Okay, go ahead, sister. His teachings makes us joyful and radiant and radiate his light. Amen. His precepts are so pure. His commands, how they challenge us to keep close to his heart. Amen. The revelation light of his word makes my spirit shine radiant. Amen. Yes. Amen. Woo. Every one of the Lord's commandments, commandments is, is right. right. Yes. Following them brings cheer. Yes. Nothing he ever. says ever needs to be changed. Amen. Imagine. Praise the Lord. The rarest treasures of life are found in His truth. Yes, they are. That's why I prize God's word like others prize the finest gold. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing yes. brings the soul such sweetness as seeking His living word. Amen. Amen. For they warn us, His servants, and keep us from following the wicked way, giving a lifetime guarantee. Great success to every obedient soul. Amen. Amen. Without this revela revelation light, how would I ever detect the waywardness of my heart? Lord, forgive my hidden flaws whenever you find them. Keep cleansing me, God, and keep me from my secret selfish sins. Yes. Yeah. May they never rule yes. over me. Yes. Amen. Amen. For only then will I be free from fault and remain innocent of rebellion. Yes, God. Let's so, say this together, uh -huh. too. Go ahead, lead it, son. So may, may the words, words of my mouth, and my meditation thoughts, and every movement of my heart be always, be always pure and pleasing, and acceptable before your eyes, my only Redeemer, my Protector, God. Amen. Father, we just agree with that word right now. We ask you, Father, would you let the words of our mouth, would you, would you capture the words of our mouth? Would you help us to meditate on the right things, keep our thoughts in the right place, and every movement of our heart always be pure and pleasing, acceptable before your eyes. My only Redeemer my protector God. Amen. You know, I remember when I was uh, one time I was just just in the Word and it probably in this scripture wouldn't surprise me but the Lord the Lord, well, and I was I was uh, struggling with something I can't remember now what it was exactly but I remember I was in a place of struggle and the Lord um, said to me very plainly I see every turn of your heart every slight Every slight turn he sees when we, you know, because when we're straight on, we're straight on, right, with him. But he sees every little, <laughs> and he makes note of it. I mean, isn't that an amazing God? And he's like, hey, pay attention. 
you got a little turn going on. <laughs> and he does it out of great love, doesn't he? Oh, it's so good to see all of you. <laughs> good to see you. That, 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 but that little turn is not, he's not angry. He's not sitting up there and he's mad at you. He's just like, I see a little turn. And it's going to cause you problems, Steph, if you don't turn back. So, and right? It's, it's gentle. It's a gentle thing. Just like our turn. Well, some of our turns can look pretty... Yep. Pretty wild. But he is <laughs> gentle. He's gentle us. talking to us. He talks to us and he says, Hey, I just caught that. And he might talk to you in your dreams, right? Yes. He might talk to you in the night, speak to you in the night visions. Praise Amen. the Lord. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, Lord. Anyone else have a scripture? Those were my good ones this week. <laughs> my happy my happy words. Let's see, I was, we were reading Obadiah as well. Let's see. Obadiah. Was it 15 we read the other day? Yeah. Obadiah 15, I think it was 15. Yeah, it is the little ones. <laughs> These are the little books. <laughs> but they have massive things to say. Yeah, before, well, tonight, before I came this afternoon, I was, re I read Jonah. Obadiah. And it is so short. <laughs> okay. No, it wasn't Obadiah. Yeah, I don't think right it was. There, it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dear the Lord of the nations is near. Oh, no, it was Ezekiel 15. Mm -hmm. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel. Okay. 15. 15. 16. 15. Well... Yeah, we did. I'll try I'll try it. Oh, so I said, man, I'm going to make a little stand in the gap before we only have. Okay, here it is. It's Ezekiel 22, verse 29. 22, yeah, Ezekiel 22. 29. And since we're praying about the elections right now, let's we'll, we'll read this and we'll pray for the elections. <clears throat> the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them, and I have consumed them with fire of my wrath. For their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, says the Lord. You know, the Lord sees when, when we're being oppressed, and when we're being robbed, yes. and when we're being vexed. He sees all of these things, yeah. and, they're, and oppressing the stranger wrongfully. He sees all of this, and he says, I'm looking for righteous people to stand. So, Father, we just, we just bow before you right now. First of all, we repent for the for our land, for <clears throat> for the for the our nation, for the wrongful things that we have done. But Lord, we ask we we know that you see what is going on in our nation. You see everything. We see a tiny, tiny bit. We're only allowed to know a certain amount. Yes. But Father, you know everything, and you have no bounds on what you know. You know everything, and you know that not only do you know what they've done, but you know the thoughts of their heart, the wicked. And you know everything, even of the good. So, Father, we thank you and we give you glory and praise that your plan is the best and we trust your plan. Yes. We ask you, Father, that during this election season, that you will 
uh, that the church will rise up. The yes. true ecclesia yes. will yes. rise up and take their rightful place yes. as governmental authority in the land. And we ask, Father, through yes. the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, that you will give us wisdom, yes. knowledge, and revelation. Let's just put our hands out right now. Let's just ask the Lord. Lord, we ask you. We humbly bow before you, knowing that all wisdom begins with you. Yes. All knowledge, all revelation begins with you. Yes. So, Father, right now, we ask for wisdom, knowledge, and revelation of how to vote, who to vote for, we, we, we recognize this is a godly thing that we stand for our nation, so Lord, but we also know that we must ask you wisdom so that we will help um, righteousness in the land. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Does anybody else want to pray for election? Anybody else have a thought? Thy will be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven we also we do we agree with heaven right now lord you gave us dominion on this earth and we know your will is good and lord we thank you that we have the uh, and we have the um it's the our 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 prerogative it's our responsibility to accomplish everything we can in righteousness so, Father, we ask um, from this place, from this governmental place in Golden, Colorado, the, the territorial capital of Colorado and Kansas, the original territorial capital, Lord, righteous people settled this land and some unrighteous, <laughs> some, some horse thieves and everything else. But, Father, we ask you, Lord, that from this place of authority that you will give us wisdom and knowledge revelation of how to accomplish your will, your kingdom come on this earth as it is in heaven. We agree with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in that great prayer meeting that's happening in the heavenlies right now. And we thank you, Lord, that your hand is on the move. We give you glory that we are not hopeless. We thank you, Lord, that your hand is moving on our behalf. And you said that you will help the righteous. And Lord, we, we work to be righteous, but we, we lean heavily upon your blood for your righteousness. And we thank you, God, that you are on the move and doing your good will toward this nation because we have cried out to you. We ask in Jesus' name for your hand to move on our behalf. Yes, go ahead. This is a paraphrase from Hebrews 11. 1. I shared this with Connie this morning. Faith is the assurance or the title deed of the things that you and I hope for that that title deed being the proof of things that you and I do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So at this time we lift up yes. and have faith, complete yes. and total faith and belief in your we promises. You, Every one of the things that we've talked yes, about from, from Ezekiel, from yes. Psalms, you have spoken these things, and history yes. is but a blip to you. Yes. And you've seen it from the start to the finish. Yes. And you have a plan that is above and beyond anything we can yes. conceive, imagine, or even hope for. But we have a hope yes, in right. the promises that you've given us. Right. And that hope has helped to generate a faith. Yes. A faith that burns because you've lit it. You've lit it inside of us. Your Spirit lives inside yes, of us. Lord. You, Father, you, Son, yes, you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you yes, live Lord. inside of us. And Lord, you Lord, have Lord. sparked us in such a way that we have faith. That no matter what things happen, yes. no matter how things turn out, you will take care of That's it. Right. And those that are not just will be dealt with. That's right. And those that are That's righteous right. will be dealt with That's too. Right. So we trust you. Yes, we we trust have you. faith in you. And we know, we know. Yes. No matter what happens, we believe in you right. and trust you in all things. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Amen. I, I want to say, I, uh, while you were saying that, it remi I, remind, um, I was reminded that in 2020, there were four blood moons. And yes. I, uh, I actually, on my computer this uh, tonight today I was happened to look and there was the four blood moons on my thing and I had I had copied down a um, an interview that 
Mark Biltz and Jonathan Kahn were doing with um, Sid Roth. And mm -hmm. they were talking about yeah. those four yeah. blood mm -hmm. moons. Yeah. And they said there's been, there's only been two four blood moons in history, but there was a blood moon. Uh, one was around the time Jesus was. I, boy, I can't remember when the. It may have been when. It, it may there, have been there earlier was, than there that. There was four Exodus. then. There were four also at the time of Christopher Columbus leaving. Yeah. Christopher was Columbus was another time of the four blood moons. And there was one blood. I one blood moon. I think in nineteen in nineteen forty eight. No, was there four? Four. 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 In, four. In four, and then in 1967 again, 1967. and then Beautiful. in 2020. That's right. Yes. yes, that's right. And and they said, you know, at, always something big is and happening. Guess what's these. happening Tuesday? Mm -hmm. And Tuesday, blood moon. there is a blood moon. Oh. So mm -hmm. we can know that God He's has moving. this. He's moving. They already, He knows. He already has it. Um, but I encourage you all to vote. <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> but um, it, we know, regardless of what we see with our eyes, regardless of what we see the outcome, we know that God has this. Yes. yes. He has it. Absolutely. Yes. Well, just this morning, uh, here, okay. here. Oh. just this morning on Facebook, Lance Wallen wow. put out. Um, he's speaking on it, and yes. then he showed. The website is called Million Voices. Yes. www.millionvoices.org. Yes. And it's got a list of the states yeah. and it's got um, the main problems that yeah. we're all voting for in yeah. each state mm -hmm. and the ones that agree <laughs> and the ones that disagree with that. The is, amendments? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's all on that website. Okay. So there's no guessing. Yeah, right. we can either agree with that senator, or we can disagree. Not. Right. And it's got the list right under That's million good, voices. Good. Million voices. Right. That's, That's good. good. That's good. good. Yes. Can you explain what a blood moon is? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I will. It is when. Well, the moon is on an elliptical path. 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 Okay. Yeah. And so, when it circles around um, a certain way. You know, sometimes we're further away from the moon and it looks much farther away. Mm -hmm. It's still in the same place. However, we, wherever we're situated in the whole thing, there are times that it passes by us and it is it is much bigger and much closer, it's, it's closer. to us. Yeah. And the, and the angle, yeah, it's like a harvest like moon. A harvest the moon. angle of how the light is striking from the sun to the moon puts more light through our atmosphere, causing it to be red. Yes. That's the scientific sure, sure. reason. Yeah. But God has used these things and the order of these things, because they always come right. lined up with specific holiday, Jewish yeah. holidays. Right. Yeah. They line up with events That's and right. times when there's been crisis. <coughs> God has acted. When these blood moons take place, it's a sign in the heavens that he's doing something. Right. It doesn't mean we believe in the moon or something. Right. It just means God's doing stuff. God's and we're doing trusting doing God. Amen. Amen. And yeah, and typically because the the Israelites, the Jewish people are on a lunar schedule. That's right. So their feasts are gonna fall during That's these right. harvest moons. And That's you're right. gonna see that happen every time. It's it's not it's not like um, some crazy out of the world thing. No. It's no. that's how it is. That's the cycle that the Lord is on. He's on the same cycle we are. That he loves the Jewish feasts and he has he's got he's got their feasts. Our our feasts our for them feast. because we Amen. know it's the feasts of the Lord that was his setup, his mm -hmm. calendar, and we agree with that. And so yes. Uh, Mark Bills Mark has Bills. a book about it. Yes, he, he does. And it goes back all the way back to Genesis and how the That's right, the blood moons. moons. And uh -huh. John Hagee has a book as well. John Hagee, yeah. Actually, John Hagee used Mark Bills. That's right. And I think I have Mark Bills in the, book, Jonathan in the bookstore. Kahn. Jonathan Kahn oh, used Mark Bills. Mark, Mark Bills did the work on He did that. the research. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he was the brain behind it. Mm -hmm. yes, exactly. I mean, God was the brain, but he's, you know, yeah. Mark got the revelation. In there. He was raised down. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. In the dwelling place. Oh, yes. Okay. Whatever that is, it's a dream. Right. So we went up. It's steady dreams. And we went over dreams. 
So I'm just wondering if you know from the dream book, because I'm thinking in scripture, we have the bridegroom symbolic of the sun and the sun coming up. And oftentimes, I think in the scripture, the moon is like the bride. Oh, that's good. So that's good. You know, I would have to look again, but you're right. God uses the the sun and the moon yes. as metaphors. Yes. Yeah. Reflects, you know, reflects the light exactly. of the sun. Yeah. So it's a, just a beautiful imagery. It is excellent. That's excellent. Very good. Very good. You guys are so smart. I'm so proud. <laughs> we just talk about this stuff all the time. Praise the Lord. We got a good homeroom teacher. Very good. <laughs> thank you, Patty. Well, thank you. Well, you know, Holy Spirit is the number one teacher. And praise the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's just speak in tongues for a minute. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're such a good teacher. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you teach us every day. Come on, church. I don't know what I do without you, Holy Spirit. I ask, Lord, that you teach us tonight. Lord, can we hear your voice tonight? Would you speak to us plainly? Would you help us to understand, Lord, because we know the thoughts of heaven are way above our thoughts. Your ways are way above our ways. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father God. Your ways are so good. Your thoughts are so good. The way you do things is right on. And we trust you. Your word is true. That's right. I love that That's last right. scripture we read. Your word is so good. Amen. It, it converts our soul. It it changes our soul. It ministers to us every day. And we just, every day we want to look up to the Lord. All right. If you have your book. Now, does anybody not have a um, book of notes? Do you not have one? Do you need one? We have some over here and we'll just hand them to you. I'm yeah. Bring mine. You okay. You didn't bring yours? I'm okay. Bring mine. Yeah. Like okay. Them. We'll we'll just you loan, loan you one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you need one? We and loan me. I, I bought one. But yes, fun. you did. Third page. 32 is where we're going to start. Bought and paid for. I got one more right now. Oh. Anybody? Yep. <laughs> good, good, good. We got lots more. We've got lots more. That's right, we do. And it's a great book. Praise the Lord. I'm very happy. <laughs> very happy we have a good book. 32? Oh, it's a great book. Page 32. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. I'm having some computer issues, so give me a sec. Okay, no, no hurry. I'll just start talking about... I'm going to talk just a little bit about the safer real quick, because... On page 32, down at the bottom, mm -hmm. or in the middle, yes. it talks about what what books were considered in Judaism and early Christianity to be included in the canon. And last week we talked about this just a little bit, um, where um, things have changed down through time. We didn't just have the 66 books all through time. We've had many more books, and they got cut out as time went. And so I just want to say that because I don't want anybody to get stuck thinking that there's only 66. There are more. In fact, uh, Stephen Pigeon, who authored the Safer, he said, when is 66 God's number? <laughs> and that's usually the truth. It's not God's number. So, But the, what the Safer does, the, here, this is the Safer right here, and it holds all 81 books that the Ethiopian church kept. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Ethiopian church would have, they were very careful to keep the scrolls. Remember in the I'll Old Testament, Ezra had the scrolls, right? He would have compiled all of the Old Testament scrolls and kept them together. And then in the New Testament, you had, we had up until 100 AD, you still had apostles alive. Mm. Right? John John was alive almost clear till 100 AD. And he they those apostles would have held the scrolls that they had and kept them together. And it was not until 400 300 and something, 368 or something like that when they began to mess with those scrolls and say, "Well, this scroll is good, this scroll is not good." Mm. And it was people who really didn't know. 
and right. shouldn't have been doing That's it. Right. So it's a blessing that we have the 81. I'm not, I, I love my King James. I have my King James right here. I'm not knocking any version. Please understand me. I'm not, not I love the Word of God. I love the Word of God. <laughs> I love the Word of God. I memorize so much of the King James. It's comfortable to me. But it's, it, it has problems like the rest of them because um, after 100 AD, people started messing with things. And so we want if we have a doctrinal issue, we're going to go back to the Hebrew and to the Greek. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you get somewhere and you're reading a, a version of the Bible, you're reading uh, a version that you're like, wait a minute, I don't understand that particular passage. I don't, I don't get what's going on there. Go back to the Hebrew, go back to the Greek, go back to the, use a Strong's commentary, use a lexicon, go back, mm -hmm. study out the original languages, okay? And there's great commentators, and ask, you know what, ask Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I remember years ago reading Daniel through, getting to Dan, getting halfway through Daniel and saying, I have no idea what just happened. You know, down chapter 1 to 6, I got, okay, I get those. 7, where are we? And what country have we just landed in? What universe are we? <laughs> What's going on there? And now I have a little more of a grasp after continuing to read over and over and asking Holy Spirit, would you please show me? Asking, asking. He does, he does. He reveals things as time goes on, right? Yeah. Psalm 23 meant something as a child. Yeah. Psalm 23 yeah. meant something to me as a 25-year-old. Psalm yeah. 23 yeah. means something, something different. different to me, and I expect in 20 years he's going to mean something yeah. more. Amen. It just gets better and better. The Word of God gets Amen. better and better. And so don't give up on the Word, because it's not, it's yeah. not going to change, and it's, and it's always right. Okay? Amen. So when I say these things, I don't want to discourage anybody from the Word of God. I just want to say, don't get just stuck on one version or another. We have, like, um, let me just give you an example of our wonderful American church. We have people that will say it's only King James. You yes. cannot do any other Bibles. Mm -hmm. Okay, King James was a man who was fallible he would make he made a lot of mistakes and he made mistakes in the word of god he changed chapters he changed the name of james or uh, jacob. became the names of jacob, jacob to, james. to james because he wanted his name in the bible now excuse me yes. that's a problem yes. <laughs> so there's some problems in romania <laughs> yeah how proud is that oh i'm going to change his name to my name <laughs> Yes. I thought it was interesting because in, in Romanian, my language, it's Jacob. It is yeah. Jacob. Why Thank is it you. I was wondering about that. That's because he because had in ego your problem. language, yeah. it didn't change. Boy, did what? He had an ego problem. He had an ego problem. He really did have an ego problem. And he was, I he, why. he didn't, he was not, can I say he was not a scholar? King James was not a scholar. And so when, when some man has put his name on it, or woman, doesn't matter. Um, when they put their name on a Bible, it, then you're going to get their perspective. perspective. You're going to get their glasses. Their, their study things. notes. Their study <laughs> notes. <laughs> and, and you know what? We have a lot of those. We have a lot of pastors, lot of pastors write their own. And, and just know that it's their study notes. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking it. I'm, in fact, I love Jack Hayford's study Bible. Right. I love it. Mm. And in fact, this is Jack Hayford's study Bible right in front of me. <laughs> but um, I'm just, I just want to, I want to say that because I want us to not be stuck in a religious mindset that there's only one way or it's the highway. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Stephanie. Yes. Do, in Bible Gateway, I don't know if, you, if you're aware, you can do a parallel. Mm. Yes, yes, you can do a parallel. I've got it up on the screen. Right, yeah. So I've got New King James on one side this is very and good. NIV on the other. So if you're, that's, you know, if you use 
uh, King James as <laughs> your, James. you know, and you're going to NIV and you're like, well, wait a minute, you, you, you can look What's back the at the King James, oh, and then you can go even further back in, in whatever store house right. Bible Gateway has. Right. So that's a great beginner yeah. with the parallels. That's right. That, um, uh, I'll show there you go. Nope, that's exactly cool. right. And um, we know that some Bibles... Uh, are actually looking for word-for-word -word translation. We know mm -hmm. that others are looking for thought-for-thought -thought translation. Mm -hmm. And I can say, um, because we're talking about translations from uh, the Hebrew and the Greek, it I really don't think it matters. I think as long as they are trying to stick close to the thoughts that are coming out of the Hebrew and the Greek, then they need that's that's important. Uh, one of the first books I read completely through was the NIV. It, it, it was not had not been out that terribly long when I read it. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And then I went through and found out they had left out some verses. Yep. And that kind of messed yep. me up a little yep. bit. <laughs> but don't get messed up, okay? It, it Read what you need to. And like I said, you can go back and find the verses that they left out. You can go back and find the verses that the King James left out. You can go back and find a lot of things. And you'll look in your Bible, some, and some of them will say, especially the end of Mark, they'll say, well, this wasn't in yes. some translation or some manuscripts. Yeah. Well, they, you can always find them, read them, and if it messes with your theology, you can say, okay, this is messing with my theology. I'll put it on hold for a little bit until I can understand this. But I love those scriptures that say, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, mm -hmm. and cleanse the leper. And I, I live my life on that, so I love that. <laughs> and I have never found that to be untrue. All right. <coughs> so, the Ethiopic Bible is the oldest known collection of writings which were gathered into the Old and New Testaments. It's a work identified as the Ethiopic Bible. And it was from the second century, which is way earlier than some of our Bibles today. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church has about 46 of the old, 35 of the new, and that brings the total of cana uh, cana canonized books to 81, and that's what we have in the Safer. The Ethiopic version of the Old and New Testament was derived from the Septuagint. Does anybody remember the, the story of the Septuagint, which was 70 people translating the uh, from Hebrew, no, it's from Greek. Hebrew, Hebrew. Hebrew to Greek. Hebrew. That's right. Good job, guys. <laughs> it also includes, includes the book of Enoch, Barak, and the third and fourth Ezra's. It's the church. <clears throat> Sorry. That's okay. I'm usually, I should be in my notes. It is, it also includes, it is the church of Ethiopia that undertook to preserve these sacred documents. Among those preserved books is the book of Enoch and the book of Jubilees. Uh, otherwise known as the Little Genesis, which has also been preserved in its entirety only in the Ethiopic version. The preservation of yet one more book in its entirety, namely, is the Ascension of Isaiah and is to be remembered as the credit to the Ethiopic church. One day we'll get to see these guys and say thank you for keeping the whole thing. Now, I did, you should have in your notes the uh, copy, and if you don't, here it is. So... Would somebody, could I hand this to some, Bernstein, can I hand this to you? If anybody doesn't have this on after page 32 in your notes, I left it out of the manuscript. So, uh, Rick, you won't have it. So, Rick over here will need it, too. So, that was my fault. Okay, let's start now with chapter four. And so, here we are after we're talking about the bo books of the Bible that we have. Now we're back to talking about Jesus and the history surrounding Jesus' birth. So, um, what was happening around the death of Jesus, the Messiah? We're on page 33 at the top. Isn't that a good number for starting to talk about Jesus? <laughs> Persecution of the believers. The new church location, happenings that bring us to 67 AD. In 26 AD, Tiberius Caesar was reigning over Rome. He actually had already been in power since... Uh, 42 BC, and here we are at 37 AD, or he, and he ruled clear to 37 AD. Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea, Herod Antipas was the tetrarch of Ju Galilee, and Philip was the tetrarch. Uh, the high priest was Annas and Caiaphas. Um, do you have the uh, PowerPoint? Um, 
It's right beside you there. Yeah. The green or the white one? Green. green. And there's a um, there's some pictures of all of these guys. We'll go ahead and read a little bit more while she gets that up. The word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the desert. And by God's authority, he was a Nazarite who was both the priest and the prophet of the Lord. And he baptized in the desert of Judea. Historians have recorded that Zacharias had Elijah's belt hidden in the temple. This belt was given to John because he was anointed by God as both priest and prophet. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's look back real quick before we go too far. There's some pictures. Yeah. Titus. So here is uh, Tiberius Julius Caesar Augustus. That, that's why it's confusing because he had so many names. <laughs> and then there's Annas and Caiaphas. All right. Now, these guys, go back just a second. Annas and Caiaphas, notice they have the high priest things on, but they would have been from the line of Herod, and they would have said, we are the high priest. In other words, they were doing it at, not out of how God had them. Who was the high priest? Who was to be the high priest from the tribe of Levi? Levi. And they were to be, um, it was to be out of Aaron's family mm -hmm. in perpetuity, right? right? Yeah. But it messed up during the time of the Maccabeans. And then the Herodians took over. And these guys would have been Sadducees. And they became very political. Mm -hmm. And so they're up there saying, we are the high priest. We have the power. And the the uh, church, the power of the uh, religious sector. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the power over Jerusalem, and they they were a problem. We all know that they were a problem to Jesus. So, and then we know who, who Caesar was too. He was too. And he was a problem Zacharias too. was probably the real right. high priest. The high he priest. was yeah. the real yes. Um, um, Pastor, were uh, were uh, were Ananias and Caiaphas directly appointed by Herod? Or was there some finagling? Well, there probably was some finagling. Okay. Um, I don't know that they would have uh, listened to the Herodians so much. And I can't remember oh, on that, this particular okay. one. Okay. But you're right. There was a whole lot of money changing yeah, hands. Yeah, money. And money. it was a problem. I'm just like today. Certain people get in because they have money, right? right so go to the next one now. Now, we, we do know, and that was correct, Zacharias, when he was in the temple, he was doing, let's just turn, let's just turn in our Bibles to, um, where's the best story of Zacharias? Is it in Mark, Matthew, let's see, let me look real quick. Which one? Is it Luke? Is Luke the best one? Okay, let's start with Luke 1 then. What version? Um, I don't care. The good one. The good, the good one. one. <laughs> <laughs> the one we have on hand. The one that you can get you quickest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which we'll have to decipher because there's so many names in there. Okay. So let's go to John's birth and now Luke 1 5. And I'll start re Are you there? Right. Luke 1, 5. five. During the reign of King Herod the Great over Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah who served in the temple as part of the priestly order of Abijah, his wife Elizabeth, was also from a family of priests being direct, a direct descendant of Aaron. So, who was the rightful priest? Mm -hmm. Zechariah and his wife. They were both lovers of God, living virtuously, following the commandments of the Lord fully, that they were childless since Elizabeth was barren, and now they were both quite old. One day, Zechariah's priestly order was on duty, and he was serving as priest. It happened by the casting of lots, according to the custom of the priesthood, that the honor fell upon Zechariah to enter into the holy place and burn incense before the Lord. A large crowd of worshipers had gathered to pray outside the temple at the hour when the incense was being offered. All at once, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing just to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was startled and overwhelmed with fear. But the angel reassured him, saying, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God is shining grace to you, for I've come to tell you that your prayer 
For a child has been answered. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to name him what? John. John. <laughs> okay. So, John would have been the rightful heir of a priest. Okay? Right. The mm -hmm. high priest. And it is said that the... Um, in the historian, and, and I think it's Josephus that has this in his thing, in his books. He was the one who said that Zacharias had Elijah's belt because Elijah had been the prophet, oh, wow. right? Uh -huh. Had Elijah's belt hid in the tabernacle behind the altar of incense. And when Zacharias was going to have this son named John, he gave this belt to Baby John. Isn't that cool, so cool? So, the reason we bring that up, the reason we bring that up is because John would have been the true high priest. Now, we're going to kind of go through quickly through Jesus' life because this study isn't about necessarily about everything about Jesus, which we love that story study and we want to do it. But, we're going to look on the outside, looking just a, at a brief historical look at it, where John would have said, go to the next um, thing. Yeah, here. And I'm going to have somebody read. So this John would have been the one who chose the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. and, and in the temple, it would have been the high priest, which would have been... Caiaphas and Annas. They would have been picking the the um, the lamb for the Passover, mm -hmm. right? But here's John in the scripture, and we're going to read that. Who would like to read? Okay. Just read that. Yeah, read that. What's up there? The very next day, John saw Jesus coming to him to be baptized, and John cried out, Look, there he is, God's lamb. He takes away the sins of the entire world. I told you that a mighty one would come who's far greater than I am because he existed long before I was born. My baptism was for the preparation of his appearing to Israel, even though I didn't recognize him. Then, as he baptized Jesus, he proclaimed these words. I see the Spirit of God appear like a dove descending from the heavenly realm and landing upon him, and it remained on him. Amen. Before this, I did not know who he was, <laughs> but the one who sent me to baptize with water had told me, you will see the Spirit come down and stay on someone. He will be the one I have sent to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen this happen, and I can tell you for sure that this man is the Son of God. Isn't that Amen. interesting? I, when I was reading this today, I was thinking, go back to that for just a second. Uh, go back up to this. Okay, so um, before this, I didn't know who he was. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, <coughs> who's he listening to? God. God. He's listening to God. Do you see why it's so yeah. important that we know how to hear the voice of God? That's a word of knowledge. That's a word of knowledge. And John was operating in that word of knowledge even then. Were the, were the gifts in the Old Testament? Absolutely yes. And they are still going on today. They didn't stop Amen. anywhere. So you will see the Spirit come down on someone. He will be the one I've sent to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I've seen this happen. So he was, he was seeing the confirmation of the word from God. Right there in front of him. Okay, go to the next one. That's, that's like releasing a decree as well. Huh? Amen. Yes. Amen. That's yes. good. That's oh, good. Yeah. Amen. Who would like to read? Sandra? Anybody? Yes. Okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We got some. We got. We better do. We well, hold jump. on just a second. Okay. So, um, now we arrive. Okay. So John announced Christ, mm -hmm. who would come after him and made Jesus known to Israel. God gave John this sign. He would know the one whom he saw, the Holy Spirit, descending and remaining. John went into the regions around Jordan, lifting his voice like a trumpet and proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John wore a garment of caramel, uh, camel's hair and leather belt about his waist like Elijah. Because he was like Elijah. Isn't that sweet? He ate uh, uh, honey and locusts. Uh, locusts is clean. 
So if we're in a time of famine, you can't eat locusts. Yeah. Um, not that you want to, because yeah. I don't think any of us want to eat bugs. <laughs> okay, but just know that that is a clean bug, which is very interesting. All right, uh, and it's inexpensive. John, the true, not political, high priest, recognized Jesus as the true Passover lamb. Now we've arrived at the public ministry of Jesus, or Yeshua. Jesus went to, the, to Jerusalem for the Passover to the temple and drove out those who bought and sold. He performed miracles, and many believed in him. Herod cast John into prison, and John was beheaded in 32 A.D. Yeshua the Messiah was crucified in Jerusalem. And I think we have some more scripture that I wanted to read on that uh, PowerPoint. Nope, not yet. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, I need to make notes in my, my notes here. All right, let's read um, I, Jan, I, John, and the Disciple. Who would like to read that? It's in the notes there. Who would like to read? Anybody? Sure. Okay, okay. I'll come back to you, Kristen. I, John, am that disciple who was, has written these things to testify of the truth. Now, this is not John the Baptist. This is John this is the John, Revelator. The one who loved yeah. Jesus. And the one who loved the Jesus beloved loved one. Jesus loved. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. I have written this to testify of the truth. These are the things that he actually experienced. Yes. And we know that what I've documented is accurate. Jesus did countless things that I haven't included here. And if every one of his works were written down and described one by one, I suppose that the world itself wouldn't have enough room to contain the books that would have to be written. In John 21, verses 24 through 25. Amen. So, this was John the Revelator. Not, this is John the Beloved, the Disciple. The Disciple. Oh, yes. Not the yeah. Um, so after the, after the death of Yeshua, in AD 41, let's get there, Claudius Agrippa was awarded Judea and Samaria, thus making his domain almost as large as that of Her his grandfather, Herod the Great. Agrippa was very sensitive to relig Ju religious Jewish feelings and even to the point of executing James, the son of Zebedee, one of Jesus' apostles, and putting Peter in prison. Agrippa died suddenly in AD 44 while attending a festival in Caesarea and accepting acclamation as a god. Be careful what you accept acclamation for. In AD 49, a dispute between the Jews and Jewish Christians developed in Rome. In an effort to restore order, Emperor Agrippa II expelled both groups from Rome, apparently making no distinction between them, and Paul appeared before Agrippa II while he was imprisoned in Caesarea. But Agrippa arrogantly dismissed Paul and his words. When the Jewish war broke out in AD 66, Agrippa sided with the Romans. This is a man, Agrippa, who was probably one of the Herods, and mm -hmm. he should have been with the Jews, but he was against the Jews. Mm -hmm. And he sided with the Romans once again. How are new believers in Yeshua going to move forward during, during great persecution? Now, what happened was we have Jesus' death, and then we have a man named Stephen who stood boldly before the Sanhedrin and he spoke boldly of Jesus. Boy, he, that, that sermon brings you to weeping and cheering <laughs> all at once. And, and I, I hate to skip over it here, but we're just looking at the history. So I apologize for that, but but he preached one of the best sermons ever. He actually started clear at the beginning of yes. the Old Testament. He went all the way through. Yes. Stephen's my namesake. I I would either be a Stephen or a Stephanie, and I ended up a Stephanie. Praise the Lord! <laughs> but I love Stephen, and his sermon is absolutely powerful. One night we'll read it all at once. It's so good. All right. And then he said, and look what you've done. You have murdered the Son of God. So powerful. And then they stoned him. They drug him outside of the city. They stoned him. Gnash their teeth. This is a gnash their teeth at him. And he, while they're stoning him to death, he says, I see. And this couldn't have made him feel any better. <laughs> I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. So, 
I just want us to be encouraged because you know what? When you're going through persecution, mm -hmm. you never know what you're going to see exactly. and how you're going to enter exactly. into glory. Yes. And here's that Stephen going, whoa, mm -hmm. I see Jesus standing. This one you murdered <laughs> standing at the, the yeah. right you know, hand of the Father. The one thing that's, that's really cool, I believe in this, is that Jesus went to sit next to God that's after right. it was finished. Yes. But as a mark of respect for Stephen, who was being martyred, but who believed so strongly, and he was just telling the truth Amen. to the people that needed it, there's Jesus now standing, welcoming so him, which yeah, is different than a ruler who is just, you know, I'm the king. Right. Come my, come my Stephen. That's come right. Stephen. That's right. So good. Oh. So you have no idea. You know what? When we're persecuted, when we see, when things happen to us, boy, we should have no fear. Amen. Because who knows what Amen. you will see during that yes. time. And, um, and yes. so Amen. we just say yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. yes. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll go. I'll do whatever you say. Whatever. Yes. 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 Right? Okay, because the reward is so much greater than the trouble. Glory to God. All right. Now, the believers have changed location because after this um, persecution goes on with Stephen, then all of a sudden the persecution in Jerusalem gets horrific. Yes, it goes crazy. And the, the Christians began, the, the Jewish believers, the, Christ, the ones who are called Christ-like began to spread out mm. through the nations. Okay. And this was from God. So go back to that um, scripture. Yeah, that was on the, the thing. So, because of the persecution <coughs> triggered by Stephen's death in Jerusalem, and this is from <coughs> Acts 11, uh, 19, and we're going to read clear to the end of the scripture. Because of the persecution, many of the believers were scattered. Some reached as far as the coast of Lebanon, the island of Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. But they were still only preaching the word to the Jews. Notice they were still doing, because Jesus had just gone to the Jew, right? right. He mm -hmm. had, he, yes. there was, there was, um, he, it was, that was his commission. He had set his eyes like lit. He had a job, he had an assignment. And he kept that going. It wasn't that he disregarded the Gentiles. He loved them and talked to them and sat with them, didn't he? Yes. But his main job was to the Jew. But here we are afterwards, and many, many Gentiles have come to Jesus in the meantime. On second, uh, During Acts chapter 2, many Gentiles did come. That's us, us believers who are outside. And we weren't Jewish, but we came to Jesus. So and in Acts 2, that's what was happening. Now, the, the, uh, but the apostles and the disciples, they were still only preaching to the Jews. However, some of the believers <coughs> from Cyprus and Cyrene who had come to Antioch in Syria preached to the non-Jews living there, proclaiming the message of salvation in the Lord Jesus. The mighty power of the Lord was with them as they ministered, and a large number of people believed and turned their hearts to the Lord. Praise God, because some of you probably have family line dating clear back to that. We may never know that here on earth. Go down <coughs> to this next little spot. So, this is where the church uh, moved after Jerusalem. The main, the main teaching center was in Antioch. Wouldn't you love to be here? <laughs> it was a wonderful seacoast town. What's, what's the sea? What is the water... Body water. Oh, it is Mediterranean. 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 Yeah, and there's kind of in a cove. It's in a really nice cove. That's probably not the right term. We memorized all those terms when my kids were in school of water. Oh yeah, right here. Yeah, this is. I, that would probably be called a gulf or a bay. A bay. Right. So it's all the way back in here. Right. So Antioch is right here. Jerusalem. I way think that's there. Jerusalem. Yes, it is. And um, and here's Syria. So all the way up here. So that means, I mean, it was, the gospel was spreading out through the region. And I just, this is Turkey up here. So I just want you to see where they are. Here's Rome. So the first church was not here. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Here. <laughs> so there's a verse. There's a verse in Acts that said they were first called Christians and Antioch. Well, we're going to read that next. You're exactly right. Go to the next scripture. I'll let you read it if you want to. Do you think you can see that? Which one? The news, of, the news of this happened. News of what was happening in Antioch reached the Church of Jerusalem. 
So the apostles sent Barnabas to Antioch as their emissary. When he got there and witnessed for himself God's marvelous grace, he was enthused and overjoyed. He encouraged the believers to remain faithful and cling to the Lord with passionate hearts. Barnabas was a good man, full of the spirit of holiness, Amen. and he exuded a life of faith. Because of his ministry, even more crowds of people were brought to the Lord. Praise Barnabas the Lord. left for Tarsus mm -hmm. to find Saul and bring him back to Antioch. Together, Saul and Barnabas ministered there for a full year, equipping the growing church and teaching the vast number of new converts. It was in Antioch that the followers of Jesus were first revealed as anointed ones. As anointed Christ. ones or Christ like Christians. Yeah. Yes. What is it called? What is that nowadays? Antioch? Anti it's still Antioch. Oh, it's still Antioch. Yeah. yeah. And what country is it in? Uh, Syria. Syria. Oh, yeah, wow. it's, yes, Syria. it's yeah. north of Israel. Yeah. yeah. So, Antioch. Okay, go down to that. Yeah, go ahead and go to that last scripture. We'll go ahead and read it. Agabus prophesied, then right after this, Agabus prophesied a coming famine. At that time, I just want you to know that there were still prophets after Jesus, oh. right? Still prophets. At that time, there were prophets. At the, who would have been the last Old Testament prophet? John. John the Baptist, John, right? right? Wow. Now, I mean, we have to think about, they were all still Old Testament, right? Uh, <laughs> Everyone that was alive during Jesus was still Old Testament. But I'm just saying, he was like the transition. Yes. He was the one that said, prepare the way of the Lord. And he was the one that made that, that possible. And he died standing on that. At that time, there were more prophets. There were prophets in the church of Jerusalem, and some of them came to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up at one of the meetings and prophesied by the Holy Spirit that a severe famine was about to come over Israel. This prophecy was fulfilled during the reign of Claudius Caesar. So they determined that each believer, according to his or her ability, would give an offering to send as relief to the brothers living in Judea. They, sent aside the, they set aside the gifts and entrusted the funds to Barnabas and Saul to take to the elders of the church in Jerusalem. It had to be a big deal to send this with Saul, can I say? Yes. To the elders of the church in Jerusalem because Saul had been so brutal against the church. So the church was important because it possessed certain distinctive features. Antioch, not Rome, was the mother of all the Gentile churches. Antioch was predominantly Jewish, Jewish leadership, pastors, and teachers. From Antioch went the first recognized mission to the unevangelized world. At Antioch began the first controversy over the status of Gentile believers. It was the center where the leaders of the church met. At one time or another, Peter, Barnabas, Titus, John, Mark, Judas, or Sabus, Silas, and probably Luke were all connected with this church. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, at the close of the first century, seems to have quoted almost exclusively from Matthew when he alluded to the Gospels as if Matthew were the only synoptic Gospel that he knew. Further proof that the book of Matthew may have been written at Antioch. Three of the Gospels struck their roots in the living oral teaching of the church at Antioch. The written Gospel is the legacy of this church in Antioch to the Jewish and Gentile believers. Amen. The church at Antioch is distinguished for its teachers. If you can imagine, that had to be the place to go if you were going to learn about Yeshua. <laughs> yeah, and that, that was kind of like today, our Brownsville, where they had revival, or our Toronto blessing, you know. That Antioch was where people wanted to travel, hear the teachers of the gospel. Barnabas and Paul were known for their later references, but... Uh, but their ministry must have made the church famous as a center of teaching. Antioch eventually superseded Jerusalem as the home of Christian preaching and the headquarters of evangelistic missions. This change in location for the church has hastened by the, uh, was hastened by the extreme persecution of Herod in AD 44. Mm -hmm. There was a reason God allowed this to happen. And uh, chapter 5 of this study, we will spend the whole time on the destruction of Jerusalem and what actually happened. And it is horrific what happened. So God in his mercy spread the gospel through the all of the region, all of the region up through there, over here, I can hit the map. But all the gospel just went forth from Israel and went all the way up and went all the way south, 
went south as well. And they spread the gospel. And went to India as well. Yes. To India. Oh, you're right. You're exactly right. India is clear over here. So look, here's Israel. They would have gone all the way. They would have traveled all the way. And right now, China is going down the Silk Road back to Jerusalem. Yes. Amen. 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 China. And those believers, praise the Lord. We bless them and we pray right yes, now yes, that they will yes, have yes, back, yes, strong yes, backs yes, to carry the yes, gospel yes, of Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay. Um, this change, okay, the persecution of Herod brought the death of James, the son of Zebedee. Peter barely escaped with his life. Uh, Acts 12 gives us a brief ex glimpse of the situation in Jerusalem, but it shows how devout church, a devout church of believers under tremendous pressure struggling to maintain its existence. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Previously, the Messianic believers had looked on, been looked on as a sect of the Jews, but now many Gentiles believe in, in Yeshua as well. So the world began to see them differently. The term Christian meant belonging to Christ. The name was probably given in derision, but the character of the disciples and the testimony that they bore gave it a complimentary meaning. It's our job to make the word Christian good. Yes. Okay? Um, and that's kind of hard. In our day and age, it's been messed up. So, but we have to work to make it good. All right. Um, Kristen, would you read this part? This is out of Acts 15, while Paul and Barnabas were in Antioch. John was alive at the church of Antioch. Yes, John. Yes, he may have been traveling, but he was there, I'm sure. That's a good question. While Paul and Barnabas were in Antioch, some false teachers came from Judea to trouble the believers. They taught, unless you're circumcised as the law of Moses requires, you cannot be saved. Okay, so this is a bit, this is the first problem of the church, of this new church. Now, I'm going to stop you right there for just a second. So imagine, imagine you have always been a Jew, okay? Imagine you have always gone to the temple. You've always done all of the things that the, the Jews did. You did all of the feasts, just like the, all of the believers did, okay? Now, all of a sudden, this Jesus died, mm -hmm. and now things have changed in a big way. Mm -hmm. No longer is the blood of animals the sacrifice for me, mm -hmm. because there's one who died once and for all. Now, the temple had continued, right? It's yep. still going to continue, and next... I'm not pray not next week, but we'll get there really soon. What happens when the temple is destroyed it is a massive problem. But God, in His mercy, allows this problem to come up before the temple is destroyed. So, unless here's the problem, what was going on? The Judaizers who may or may not have really believed in this Jesus, probably not. They were still squabbling over this question. Do you have to become a Jew if you're going to believe a believer in Yeshua? Do you still have to be circumcised like the law? This is a, a legitimate question. And you know what? The Bible says that we are all to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But this problem came up and it is almost the, um, the strong word of the Lord that keeps us balanced and from going into any legalism. Yes. So that's, that's uh, I guess, kind of like two covenants that are simultaneously connecting at the same time. Exactly. In, in transition. A massive transition. A massive transition. And yeah, so I wondered if... Was it paradigm shift. A paradigm uh, shift. Big time. Yeah. Paradigm. Oh, imagine. And also, too, Jesus himself said, I came not to abolish, but to fulfill. Yeah. To fulfill the law. The prophets. That's exactly and look, right. they were passing that down as a law and a prophet. That's, okay. So, yeah, just think, you've got everyone who's been raised just with the Old Testament books. Right? <clears throat> Jew, the covenant, the first covenant. And so, I just want to say that although it was a problem... It was not a bad, I don't think it's a bad problem when you're working out how are we going to move forward from here. And that's what they were all doing. And they had been doing it for about 10 years at this point. And there's, there, <clears throat> the Judaizers, uh, you know, can I say that in the Bible, in the Word of God, 
Um, many times we'll have terms put on people that is not nice. Yeah. Doubting Thomas. Thomas, good grief. Thomas believed way more than you or me. Let's just That's say right. it, okay? It. He be he it. was a believiver. He gave, in fact, th was it Thomas the one who went to India? Yes, and Gave yeah, his him. life, he was yes. drugged to death. Yes. Um, really by fast. horses. Um, so, I, I really love um, Morris, who, he was one of the first, one of the best commentators I've read. I have all his books. Yeah. But, he said, and I believe this, if, unless Jesus himself says something bad <laughs> about these people, let's not call them names and let's not agree with those. Because he said, you know, we don't know all of the things that were happening at that right. time. That, and and Tom, like I said, Thomas wasn't. A, and the Judaizers, I believe they were serious because they knew the law and they knew the fear of the Lord. They are seriously looking for the right. I don't believe they were just a bunch of religious bigots, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. And so we want to be careful that we're not disparaging the Jews who are honestly seeking out these answers. And this, when it says it sparked a fierce argument, it did. It was a fierce argument between the false teachers and Paul and Barnabas. Now, Paul and Barnabas were calling you guys. Hey, they were saying... Wait a minute, you guys are false teachers because you're not listening to what Jesus, Yeshua, said. Okay, mm -hmm. He's not disparaging them in the sense that, oh, you guys are a bunch of liars. He's saying you're not listening. And so it, it was kind of a strong term. Okay, go ahead and keep reading. This sparked a fierce argument between the false teachers and ba Paul and Barnabas. So the church appointed a delegation of believers including Paul and Barnabas, to go to Jerusalem to meet with the apostles and the elders of the church and resolve this issue. So the church sent them on their way. As they passed through Lebanon and Samaria, they stopped to share with the believers how God was converting many from among the non-Jewish people. Hearing this report brought great joy to all the churches. When they finally arrived in Jerusalem, Paul and Barnabas were welcomed by the church, the apostles, and the elders. They explained to them everything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so computer Slippy sorry. fingers tonight. <laughs> okay. God had done among them, but some of the believers who were of the religious group, called separated ones, were insistent, saying we must continue the custom of circumcision and require that the people keep the law of Moses. You could think about that. Maybe they thought of it more like uh, sloppy grace. Right, right. You know. Well, if I do this, I'm you know, okay. Yeah. Right. Remember, it was a, because well, circumcision is a something I have to do. Right. Well, but. It, it was a covenant. It was a covenant. Circumcision a covenant. was a covenant. But what but Paul and the others. The law of the Moses yes. that he wrote down. Maybe some of that was like people were like way out there because they didn't have the law if we but, do this but, we'll yeah. be safe okay but the that, abrahamic mm, covenant then, which uh, superseded uh, the mosaic right. covenant mm -hmm. didn't I, require circumcision right. until <laughs> later yeah sorry <laughs> okay go ahead don go ahead well, just that what came to mind as a side note was that even in the old testament the lord had spoken essentially that it's the circumcision of the heart and of your that's mind right. and good. of your ears. Yes, so just amen. Thought, that's right. You, okay, you. so I want you to see that this is a good conversation. I'm really glad you guys are thinking believers. You know what? We don't just put our brains away, do we? Right? No, no. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sister. So the apostles and the elders met privately to discuss the matter further. After a lengthy debate, Peter rose to his feet and said to them, Brothers, you know how God has chosen me from the beginning to preach the wonderful news of the gospel to the non-Jewish nations. God, who knows the hearts of every person, confirmed this when he gave them the Holy Spirit, just like he has given the Spirit to us. So now, not one thing separates us as Jews and Gentiles, for when they believe, he makes their hearts yes. pure. Yes. So why on earth will you now limit God's grace by placing a yoke of religious duties on the shoulders of believers that neither we 
nor our, our ancestors. ancestors have been able to bear. Okay, can I say, can I say that if anyone puts a yoke, oh, right, come on. of religious duties mm. on your shoulders, you, Jesus plus nothing. That's right. Right? Uh -huh. Jesus plus nothing is salvation. I don't have to do, I don't have to dress a certain way. I don't have to have a hat on. I don't have to do any of those things to be saved. I'm saved because of Jesus and, and what he did on the cross. That's all we have to look at. This is so serious. It's such a big thing mm -hmm. that they came to this conclusion here. Right at the beginning. Right. Thank God. And it was Jews and Gentiles. And they did, sent them back to where? Back to Jerusalem. Right at the very beginning of where things. And you're going to see later on, they didn't go back to Jerusalem. All of a sudden, somebody else took over the church and took it off another direction. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I just want you to remember, this is how they solved the problem. And this is why we are where we are today. Where we can say Jesus plus nothing is my Amen. salvation. Amen. 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 Okay, but even think of the ch oh, even think of the church. Like we just went past Reformation Day with Martin Luther, right. mm. and they even were having that same trouble. Exactly. Then. Right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of like that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Problem. It continues on, mm -hmm. but in a different like, way. It's like heresy to people who don't want to change. Them right. Anymore. Right. They see it as heresy. Well, here's the deal. The enemy would love to put something other than the blood of Jesus on you. And when you, um, and it is such a lie, boy, today even, I was talking with somebody about the names of God and how divisive it can be. I'm telling you, let's not get caught up in those things. It's not worth it. <laughs> it is not worth it. Be free. He who is the Son has set free is free indeed. And this is exactly the same of what it's. There's no religious duty that I can do. I can't go um, witness to enough people. I can never pray enough. Nope. Mm -hmm. I can never do enough. Nope, I can right. never do enough good deeds. Nope. And many of the Jews today, because Yom Kippur no longer can be uh, met with the sacrifice in the tabernacle. Their whole salvation is based on good deeds. Right. So you've got them every year weighing their good deeds. Remember, your good deeds will not. How many good deeds does it take to pay for one sin? Or one? how many days in hell does, does that cost to pay for one sin? It's impossible. All of eternity in hell... Will not pay for one sin. Excellent. Only the priceless blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God, for the priceless blood of Jesus. Amen. Jesus plus nothing. Now that doesn't mean we don't we sin, right? That means we we look at that precious blood and we don't stomp on it. We we thank God for His precious blood and we want to honor what He's done for Amen. us. Okay, let's go. On. It's a distraction. Whatever yes. can get us off of the Jesus. point. Isn't that and the truth? It doesn't matter if it's Tito or Big. <laughs> it's the truth. It's a destruction. And the, and enemy, the minute he has done that, he Jesus. has won. Yep. That's right. right. The enemy loves to distract you from what you have, which is priceless. And that's why I war so strongly against a religious spirit. Because that's exactly what can happen. A religious spirit looks so good. Oh, it's a religious spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I'll just never forget Jesus saying one day, Steph, it's a demon. <laughs> oh! Doesn't sound religious. Then. Doesn't sound religious anymore, does it? <laughs> so do you see what I, I just want to clarify? And bring it to bring it to the truth. You know, the Lord is so good to bring us to the stark reality of hold on, you're dealing with a demon. Get rid of that thing in Jesus' name. And if there's anything that's tripping you up, anything that's tripping you up in a religious mindset, in um, thinking you have to do something or um, accomplish something in order to enjoy the blood of Jesus, no. Okay, Stephanie, I'm excited. Yes, because <laughs> we're talking about Antioch. 
Yes. So that's coming along the earth. Okay. And you mentioned about the Gospel of Matthew possibly being written there. Yes. So, okay, so just, um, oh, good. this is the Amplified, so. Okay, go ahead. But in that's Matthew good. 11, <laughs> so Matthew 11, we have Jesus speaking. We're very familiar with this, and it connects with this idea of the yoke. Okay. And so I was told the yoke is actually one of those idioms and so you know you had the we already covered that with the different um rabbis at the time right. jesus was among those right? right um so to actually be a disciple of the rabbi was to take their yoke, the yoke. Mm -hmm. so we're talking about discipleship right and here's jesus before you know he's um, speaking to this and modeling something completely that's completely good. different and so um in matthew 11 and in 27 he's talking about that intimate relationship he has yes. with the father yes right so it's relationship and not the religion not religion and right. so then we get to verse um matthew 11 28 mm -hmm. and jesus is saying come to me mm -hmm. all you who labor and are heavy laden yes. so Amen. The labor yes. is, that's all the religion and the works that we Amen. put on ourselves, right? Amen. And the heavy laden, that's all the religion of the external, the others or other institutions. That's so put good. On us. <laughs> so he says, and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Amen. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, oh, and blessed oh, quiet. Oh, so good. <laughs> blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be born. That's so good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Heidi. <laughs> so that is exactly right on. Anything that brings down a heavy burden upon you is religious. And you know what? It doesn't get you one inch closer to Jesus. So Amen. Just let Amen. it go. <laughs> you know, I have this thought. Okay, you know, it's a little bit eleven it's that it comes it. with that it because think of this. We were created unto good works. So it's all that this is my salvation only in Jesus. But then how the enemy comes to just you know Twisting think since the garden. That's right. a little mm -hmm. twist. Yeah. And my heart turns that's out. That's what you started with. Like, so good. So good. It's, that's right on. That's right on. I was don't believe. Yeah, don't, don't believe. Okay. Don't you believe that we are introduced to eternal life through the grace of our Lord Jesus? The same grace that has brought these people to new life. Everyone became silent and listened carefully as Paul and Barnabas shared with the council at length about the signs and wonders and miracles God had worked through them while ministering to the non-Jewish people. When they had finished, Jacob, James, we talked <laughs> about we that. <laughs> it, it is Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> took the floor and said, ladies and gentlemen, listen. Peter has explained thoroughly that God has determined to win a people for himself yeah. from among the non-Jewish nations, and the prophet's words are fulfilled. After these things, I will return to you and raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen into ruin. I will restore and rebuild what David experienced so that all of humanity will be able to encounter the Lord, including the Gentiles, whom I have called to be my very own, says the Lord. For I have made known my works from eternity. That's Whoa, so good. That That's is. so good. <laughs> so in, well, I love that verse. You know, it says everything 
came into being. A pot, nothing came in it, but he made all things they were created for yeah. him and by him. Including the Gentiles. Yes, all everything. of us. All it's of us. All it is. We're yeah. all in. Yeah. So in and my judgment, we should not add any unnecessary burden upon the non-Jewish converts who are turning to God. We will go to them as apostles and teach them to be set free from offering sacrifices to idols, sexual immorality, and eating anything strangled or with any blood. So, For me, Amen. So let me stop you there. So those are the four things that we are absolutely to abstain from. Sa offering sacrifices to idols. Let's be set free from this. Father, right now... If there's anything in our lives that is idolatry or that we are bowing down to anything, any other God, we ask you right now to quicken in our minds. Open up our... Lord, you have permission in my heart. I ask you, Jesus, to keep me from worshiping or offering sacrifice to any idol. Sexual immorality. Father, right now we're surrounded by a slime pit of sexual immorality. We ask, Lord... That you will keep us from this and that you will keep us pure. It's only through the blood of Jesus that we will be set free and be pure from this in Jesus' name. So we thank you for setting us free from this and keeping us pure. Eating anything strangled or with any blood. There's a reason for that. Yes. The occult goes for blood. Uh -huh. right. There, There's a reason abortion is such a major fight in America. Mm -hmm. Listen, my friends. It's not... And isn't it shocking that that's all that the they can yell about? Yes. You won't yes. let us kill babies? Excuse me? What is that? Every time I hear it, I just bring it down to that simple truth. They're yelling, D you won't mm -hmm. let me kill babies. And I'm like, you are liars and you're in danger of the judgment. So we pray right now that our country will come oh, yes. under the understanding that it is wrong to shed innocent blood. And we are not to be eating anything strangled or with any blood. That's even saying that we are not to demonstrate animals. Even when you slaughter an animal, if you do it properly, which it should be done even in our slaughterhouses, it should be done properly. That way we don't um, disregard God's God's animals. God yeah. loves his animals. Mm -hmm. and, it's, um, and it's healthy. It is an animal killed properly, um, slaughtered properly, kosher, orga most organic is the same way, They're, they are killed properly. And they don't, that doesn't cause the animal to suffer. So the animal will not suffer when that happens. That's why those laws are set up. Okay. Keep going. I have a question generations. about yes. with any blood. Is that like, like when you go eat a steak? Like you no. not have any no. blood? No, or? because no. they bleed no. them out. So there's oh, just uh, obviously oh. going to be, yeah. The meat is hung, actually, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything and goes it's out. Drained. And it's drained. But you Most don't, important. you don't take an animal, you don't go out and cut a leg off an animal, and you've got an animal right there. That's wrong, because God uh, said it, you would make the animal suffer. No. And mm -hmm. I have just read that they're trying to do that again. I'll tell you, there's such wicked things out there right now. So God set up all these laws way back then. Mm -hmm. And, well, way back at the beginning. So, anyway, go ahead. For many generations, these words of Moses have been proclaimed every Sabbath day in the synagogue. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. So, we agree with that. We Can we join the Jews and agree with this? Yeah. <laughs> we we want to be brothers and sisters with our, our Jewish brothers and sisters. And I think that we can all work on this. And, um, and... We even want to keep a Shabbat, a Sabbath in our... How was Sabbath in Israel? Oh, is, is Charlita gone? <laughs> she probably had to go to sleep. She did. <laughs> She's back from Israel. Uh, she wrote, She texted me one night and said, you know, it's Shabbat. It was right, right at Shabbat. And I said, I am the most jealous I've ever been right now. Because <laughs> Shabbat in Israel is so good. Uh, let's go quickly through here. Opposition to the gospel crops up repeatedly. And Acts, let me get to my back to my notes. We're on page 36, 36, 36. middle of the page. <clears throat> the message about Yeshua that Jews like Peter, Stephen, Barnabas, and Paul preached antagonized other Jews who rejected the claim that Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. At stake was the question of how a person is saved and forgiven of sins. 
Jewish Christians insisted that salvation was a free gift of God's grace. Praise the Lord. Acquired okay. through trusting in Jesus Christ. It's not gained by some mixture of faith and human merit. Non-Christian Jews disagreed. They did not accept Jesus' death on the cross as the sacrifice for their sins. They insisted that they, to be acceptable to God, it was necessary to follow Jewish beliefs and customs, especially for the males, the rite of circumcision. These men were insisting that Gentiles must become Jew in every sense. In Acts 15, they make it clear by adding explicitly the Gentile believers should be directed to observe the Torah of Moses, by which they mean the, both the written and the oral. This condition goes beyond the requirements for individual salvation set forth in the Tanakh in Judaism or by the emissaries. Um, and that kind of goes into it just a little bit more. We'll talk about this uh, and the Noachide laws next week because they're in this fascinating stuff. Okay. All right. So praise the Lord. Thank you guys. You, you do so good. I'm so proud of you because you guys are true studiers of the Word of God and I, that just blesses my heart. I, uh, every time there's a good discussion and I hear great things come from all of you, I'm just so happy. <laughs> Keep up the good, good work. And you know what? You learn this simply. If, if anybody in here feels like, oh, I'll never get this. Oh, this word of God is too much. Just keep reading. Read, listen, journal out the word, write the word. You will get there. I remember when I was um, in my early 20s and reading through my Bible, I remember thinking, because my mom knew the word of God like nobody's business, and I would think, oh, I'm never going to get there. I never understood, you know, Lord, I can't even find some of these things. And she knew right where to go. And I would just be like, ah, but let me tell you, if you're serious you'll and keep going, it'll become easier. It's not, it's not, it doesn't just download into your brain one day. <laughs> but the steady reading, the steady study, the steady word of God in you reading learning you will it will happen right connie it, it does is. happen it takes time and it just takes persistence just keep going yes sister <coughs> well i'm going just to stop um i'm so grateful for the technology i've always passionate with technology yes when i too. was a teenager a, actually not teenager yet before i start learning the scriptures and um Believe me that now is so much easier. I memorized all the topics, anything you could ever imagine, it was on my brain. So now as I get older, so, and I have the, the technology, the phone, yes. and the Google. And I love Google, by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I get great. Yes. Um, so I feel so grateful for, so I can go to the scriptures and anything yes. that I want to I think of, I go there and I just search it and then it can just, it makes me so happy. It does. And, uh, and then I'm very grateful for that. And we all should be, right? Because we, yes. we, when anything, we can feel our spirit at any time. Yes. We have the source. That's right. right? Amen. So and that, that's what I want to share. That's <laughs> exactly right. And just be encouraged to do it. Just can be encouraged to continue. You can do this. And it just... Just, uh, let me say, it gets easier and easier. It just Amen. takes time, right? And it takes persistence. It's like it is part of a work of our will and our my determination. Um, but Holy Spirit is the one who makes it like butter, right? He's the one that makes Ooh. it sweet. He's the one that makes it precious to us. You're going to do the announcements. Okay. Let's just pray right now. And, I, and just lift your offering before the Lord. So, Father, right now we just thank you. For your provision for us we give you glory and praise and honor in advance for how you love us and how you take care of us and father we thank you for how you uh, bear us up <laughs> boy how you make our load light our load so light um, and lord we just thank you that you lift our loads and if we're carrying something father across this place tonight if any of us are carrying a burden we just thank you, Lord, that right now you can lift that load upon, from us because you said, no, it's not for us to carry. You know everything. 
You've watched this whole thing. You see everything. None of us are going to be worried about the election. No, none of us. Because the Lord has this. We are going to be, we are going to declare the truth. We are going to say Jesus is the ultimate victor. We recognize that this world is in trouble. However, we know the Lord is at work and we trust the plan. We trust what Jesus is doing in our, in our culture in our world, we thank him for what he is doing. We thank you that he is exposing every evil plan. We give you glory and praise and honor. And our job is not to worry or stress or be under a heavy load, but rather to cast our cares upon him because he cares way more than we can ever, can ever. And we don't know the picture. So we just have to let the Lord carry this, right? Yeah. Yes. So, if there's anyone carrying a heavy load tonight, I just ask you to just lift it up before the Lord. Say, thank you, Lord, that you're carrying us. I And also, if there's any debt that you need to get rid of, Lord, let's just lift that to the Lord and say, Lord, we thank you that you're going to take care of our debt. We yes. thank you, Father, that you're lifting the load of our burdens. Father, you said when the righteous hear you and obey, that you will take care of us. So, Lord, we're striving. We're striving to hear your voice. And to be at rest with you in Jesus' name. And when I say striving, I'm not saying it's hard work. Just teach us to, to be at rest with you in Jesus' name. And we give you all glory and praise in Jesus' name. All right, Connie, give us, while we pass this around, give us some announcements. All right. Hey, you guys look good tonight. Thank you. Uh, first off, I, I need to start with an apology. I need you guys to remember... I'm deaf in one ear and can't hear out of the other. <laughs> Literally. True. True. So when I'm back there and I'm trying to do five things, you know, one-armed paper hanger, mm -hmm. and you come up, especially on my right, mm -hmm. I'm not going to hear you. I had somebody Thursday, I was heading to the bathroom, you know, in my quick little walk, and they were behind me talking. Oh. And finally they cut up to me and went, Connie! And I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So just just be mindful of that. I'm not ignoring you. I love you. That's just how it is. Uh, I need to talk to you, sister. Uh, is it? Um, no, yeah. Maria. Maria. Yeah. All right. So Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. We will be here Thanksgiving for those who do not have a family. You don't have anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. I'm here. I'm not cooking, but yes, you do. Come here. <laughs> We'll open the church at noon. We'll strive to eat at one. We'll try to leave at three. We'll follow Bill and Earl as they're taking out the trash. Right, right. Uh, if you want to bring something, cool. If you don't want to, you can't, cool. Don't worry about it. You got your back. All right. Please let my, my husband has a day off. I just found out tonight. Let us serve you. Let us bless you, please. All right, Stephanie's got the turkey. We're good. We're good. Woo smoked. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't be here next Saturday. You home alone, please. You know. We're still doing the ASL classes. Uh, you got anything else? Uh, yes. A bag of oranges and a bag of oh. lemons for anybody who would like to take some home. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there is a retreat coming up in December. Is it early? No, no it's November. It's two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. If you'd like to go, there's information over there. Uh, yes, sir. I did think of one more. Uh, I found the, the um, artist that had done that really cool, powerfully energetic lion picture. Oh, I was going to order one. They're like 35 bucks. Oh. And I might order two of them, and I thought, gosh, if everybody else wants to order one, then we could split the shipping. Yeah. There you go, the shipping. Uh, okay. Hey, talk to me. I'll, okay. I'll order mine. Okay. okay. Earl? Yes, yeah. be sure, folks, if you have not done so already, set your clocks back. Oh, oh thank set you. Set your clocks back. back. All back. All back an hour. Woohoo! Extra sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Is it extra sleep this time? Yes. Oh. Yes. One hour. Extra hour tonight. I have a question for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is God good? Yes. yes. God is good. All the time. 
All the time. All the time. All right, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, to be gracious unto you. And the Lord make it lift his countenance upon you and give you shalom. In Jesus' name. If you'd like to give my credit card, it's back there by Cody. God bless you guys. Thank you for being so generous. You're always bringing food, and that's always welcome. We love you. Because I help out Pete with the Yes. 